In Swedish culture, it is considered rude to impose aggravation, like decluttering your stuff, onto others. I will admit, I have not given a lot of thought to what is going to happen to all of my stuff when I die. Obviously, I know I can't take it with me, but do I really want my loved ones having to go through this and having to deal with it? Swedish death cleaning, or dostadning, which do means death and stadning means cleaning, is the practice of decluttering and organizing your things so that your loved ones don't have to deal with it after you pass along and after you die. A lot of people say to start this process in their mid-60s. I am actually starting it now. If you saw my previous video about decluttering 25 plus years of things, I have lots of clutter and things in my attic, things in my basement that I need to take drastic measures. So I've started on my attic. I've, I've started Swedish death cleaning. I also want to be realistic about it, however, because it has taken me decades to accumulate all of this stuff, and so I know it's gonna take me some time to also get rid of it. And honestly, Swedish death cleaning, as morbid as it sounds, it is simply a way to decide what to do about your stuff and actually start getting rid of the stuff that you don't want and don't need or don't use. But with the harsh lens of thinking about it in terms of death, I like to think of it as just like a slight perspective shift, but I'm doing it now because I would much rather have the benefits of decluttering now rather than waiting later to have it. So a lot of people have talked about the book, The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning. One of the quotes that really stru struck me in there is that a loved one wishes to inherit nice things from you, not all the things. And the reason that struck me is because I realized I am keeping all of the things that I have. I'm keeping things from my childhood. I'm keeping things that people have passed down to me. I haven't really thought about what I'm gonna do with these things and where they're going to go one day. And so that's why I'm undertaking Swedish death cleaning and I really need to start thinking about that. Swedish death cleaning has seven steps. Number one, let your loved ones know. Number two, start with less personal items. Number three, give your possessions away gradually. Four, keep memories for yourself. And number five, donate and sell the rest. All while asking yourself the whole time along the way, will anyone be happier if I keep this item? It's interesting because I have learned so much about KonMari, but in a way, Swedish death cleaning is like anti KonMari. Marie Kondo's method focuses on decluttering and thinking about the items that bring you joy today, whereas Swedish death cleaning is to only keep the things that your friends and family will want after you die, so after you're gone. So it's a very different thing. So in my attic, I have the perfect place where I can just stuff things. When we moved into this house and we bought this house, I was so excited to finally have a storage place. You know, I had been living in apartments and you know, maybe lucky to have a tiny little closet. But when we moved in here, the attic wasn't finished. So we refinished it and we had big ideas of turning this into a playroom for the kids for half of it. And then the other half would be storage space. What has happened is it has become a place where we just stuff things that we don't know what to do with. It has become a playroom, a storage place, a hoarding place. Like literally we've just stuffed everything in here. The kids do come and play. I clean it from time to time and then they completely mess it up again. And it's just, it's just an unusable space really. And the thing about having this space is I can have my nice uncluttered neat home downstairs but then have this upstairs being super cluttered. And it's funny because, you know, I'm, I'm downstairs living my life, not thinking about all the clutter up here and not thinking about how that's probably affecting me. And I don't have to think about it or worry about it, but in reality, I do. I find that the things that create the most clutter in the home are the kitchen and kids. Kitchen between small appliances, duplicates of utensils, dishes, plates, bakeware, all of the things. It's a ton of stuff. And then you throw kids into the mix. I'm not even gonna get started on the toys, but think about that and the clothing and the sporting equipment and the school supplies, the holiday items. It's crazy. And I need to have a special category for stuffed animals. My kids love stuffed animals more than anything. However, my house is overrun with stuffed animals. I am going to insert some footage of just how many stuffed animals we have all over our house, just so you get the idea. Let me know in the comments below if your kids are like that or if they were like that, because it's a lot of stuffed animals. Another thing in the book, The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning, is that people hang on to clutter for three main reasons. Number one is fear. We fear that someone, or even yourself, will want or need the item. 
Number two is the clutter instinct. And number three is the hoarder instinct. And therein lies the reason why Swedish death cleaning works so well. Because when you look at your stuff with the lens of death, not to be so morbid, but knowing that you can't take this stuff with you, it really gives you a whole new perspective and approach to decluttering. Honestly, I think it gives a lot of clarity. And it's not morbid, it's it's just, it's just a helpful thing. And you know, I think in a lot of cultures they do talk about death and I think in the US people are less apt to do that, but it's a part of life. We don't have to think sad, be sad about it. We just have to know that it's a reality and that we can use that reality to live a better life while we're here. So after starting on my Swedish death cleaning, I have some tips I'm going to share. I think I have about seven of them. The first tip following the principles of Swedish death cleaning is to start in the areas where you can't see. So when you think of Swedish death cleaning, you're not gonna be cleaning your kitchen table or the bottom of your stairs. You are gonna be cleaning things like your attic, your basement, anything that's hidden or where you have storage. For me in particular, I've started with two garbage bags. I've got one for garbage, one for donations. There's a lot more to it, but that is where I'm gonna start because it's the easiest place for me, especially with the garbage, because there are things up here that truly are for the garbage. And if I can just quickly get those items out of the attic, that will kind of set me up to really see the things that now need my attention. Number two is that you need to save the sentimental items for last. If you start with like photos and things that you have an attachment to, you're never gonna get through it. You, you won't even be able to get started. When I was a kid, I used to clean my room and I would just spend hours taking trips down memory lane, looking at old notes, looking at old toys, and I never got any cleaning done. And I feel like it's the same as an adult. You find these boxes and these photos and you start looking at them. And before you know it, you're not getting any decluttering done. But I have a really good tip for that coming up. So stay with me here. Because I'm doing a Swedish death cleaning, I am going to t think about what I wanna pass on to my kids. So I have three kids, so I am going to take three boxes. I've got lots of boxes up here because this is where I store all the toys. A lot of these toys are going or getting donated. So I'm gonna take one box per child, and I'm just gonna think about passing down the items that they would actually want. What are the things that I have for them that will make them happy when they open the box and they see it? My next tip is to think about how you are going to assess value to your things. One of the things in Swedish death cleaning is that you should gradually give away your possessions and give those away to people who you know or your family. So we're gonna be donating some items, we're gonna be giving away some items to family, and then we're gonna be throwing away some items. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my items and I'm gonna think about who in my family might want them. And then I'm going to call them and actually ask them if they want it. And I'm gonna call them and ask them while I'm alive rather than them having to deal with it later. And this is great because it's also like family bonding. You get to call your family and talk about old things that you have and see what people might want. One thing I recently heard is if you are making a decision on what you should keep or, or donate, Think about if you were to have that item and you accidentally dropped it into the mud, how hard would you work to save it? That should be a quick way for you to think about, do I truly want this item? Another tip, which I love, is to make a box of belongings for yourself. So it's just for you. I love this idea because I have so many things that I do find important and I do wanna keep, but they are strewn about with all of the things that I'm sure that I do not wanna keep. So if I can make a box and put all of my items in there, I really just love that idea. I'm going to do that. I have like a baby blanket that's in my pajama drawer. I'm gonna put that in the box. I have some tea cups that my uncle gave me and they're sitting in a box with other things. I'm gonna put those in the box. And what's cool about this box is you can just go through it and take a trip down memory lane and enjoy looking at the things anytime you want. But I like this idea too, because it just tells you that you don't have to get rid of everything. Like you're not dying tomorrow, hopefully. My next tip is to know that Swedish death cleaning is not a weekend project. You did not accumulate all of this stuff in one weekend. There is no way you're gonna be able to get rid of it, at least not in a meaningful way, in one weekend. For me, my attic, it's gonna be a work in progress. I am going to be working on it section by section. I'm gonna do it when I have the time, whether it's weekends or holidays or, or even like days I might take off of work, and I'm just gonna get it done. I'm really excited to know that this space up here is going to be uncluttered, that it's actually going to be useful down the road. I really wanna turn it into something functional, whether that is a playroom for the kids, 
Maybe it's office space. You know, I have a lot of ideas of what I could do with this space. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna keep the decluttering going, I'm gonna link a playlist right here. So go ahead and click on it and I'll see you over there. Bye-bye.